Now, although most people are aware of honeybees and bumblebees, solitary bees are the unsung hero of the pollinating world. With over 240 species in the UK alone, they make up to 90% of the bee population. And along with other pollinating animals, they're responsible for one third of all the food we eat. And we absolutely have to help our bees. The two main ways people tend to think about it is to plant nectar-rich native wildflowers and to stop using pesticides, and that is vital. But it's also important to provide our solitary bees with a nest site and today I've got with me two products. Now this is a bee brick. And this is a cool little bee pot. You can plant stuff in it. And you may have seen bee bricks before because I've managed to get a few of them installed in places and they're made by a company called Green and Blue and uh, this is their website. They make some fantastic products to help our solitary bees. So let's look into it a bit more. If you are ever building a wall, you simply must put some bee bricks in. It's a simple, effective way of helping our cavity nesting bees and making a wall more interesting and stylish. These bricks have the same dimensions as standard bricks, so they're just as easy to lay. Try and install them in the full sun and no lower than one meter. I absolutely love solitary bees. This year I had mason bees in my garden. Um, solitary bees are fascinating to watch and they're a wonderful way to introduce kids to bees. Solitary bees have no queen um, and no honey to protect, meaning they are non-aggressive and they won't sting. Here you can see the male mason bees, which are much smaller than the females. They have emerged first and they await the emerging females so they can mate with them. And shortly after that, they'll die. So, do you know that one mason bee can do the equivalent pollination of 80 honeybees? And because they don't sting, they're safe to have around the garden. And here's how the bee bricks help our solitary bees. The species has an annual life cycle. They emerge in early spring and mate. Females then seek out suitable nest sites, such as in stones and in old walls, and then the queen, she, she uses the hole to lay her eggs. The female starts her first cell at the back of the nest. She makes about 15 foraging trips to collect pollen. Uh, she makes a little loaf of pollen mixed with nectar. And this acts as a food source for a single egg that she lays on that loaf. And she seals the cells with mud or a leaf, depending on the species. And the process is repeated until the tube is full with a row of cells. Being a solitary bee, she will never meet her young. The eggs hatch into larvae which feed on the loaf of pollen and after molting four or five times, the larvae spins a brown cocoon and pupates and adults form in around September and they remain in that cocoon until the following spring when a new generation of bees, of adults now, emerge. It's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? And this little bee pot is awesome. My little bee helper is going to plant some oregano in this one. So, the bees really like this plant and it flowers and you might like it on your pizza. Nice. So, give our bees a home and head to the website in the description. This week is Solitary Bee Week. It's an annual week of action and education to raise awareness about our incredible solitary bees. Let's talk about bees and wear our stripy tops. Cheers, guys. Bees! Yeah.